Hello everybody, I'm Jay and in the lab today, we're going to examine DLP evidence and incident purging. And we're really gonna go into it pretty deep so you have an understanding of how this works. Without further ado, we go into the Trellix console. This is on-prem DLP incident manager. And we're gonna give you some basics first. We've done some blocking, we have no action, but in many of these cases, we've collected evidence. We're gonna start here with 10880. This is just the incident ID that's been assigned to it by the application. And we're gonna click on that. And you'll see that we collected a CSV file and it had SSN numbers, birthdays, so on and so forth. Now, when you hover over here, you may, for some of you, depending on what browser you have, on the lower left-hand corner, you'll see the actual path. But if you don't, you right-click and say Properties. Now, this is going to be a little confusing as you first look at it because there's actually a URL path here. And when I click on it, you're going to notice when I get over here to the end that there's actually a path, okay? So we're gonna go up here and it's this sample data CSV file that's been placed into the evidence folder, a hidden share. First is gonna be a 94 folder and then a 4A folder. You can take this with each piece of incident. So 94 and 4A, and we're gonna minimize here. And I've broken this out so you can understand. Here's the DLP resources, here's our hidden share. And then we have four folders which have collected evidence. Here's that 94 that we saw, and in the 94, we had a 4A. Well, there you go. Now we have the encrypted evidence. This 55 belongs to over here. This 94 belongs to this folder. This 99 belongs to 99, and this Delta 4 belongs over here. And then we have the collected it. Now, why did we do this? You're probably wondering. This is gonna be pretty complicated. Not really. All we're gonna do is show you where everything currently lives. And then when we go back into EPO, we're actually gonna set up the incident purge. Now the incident purge is going to begin very simply by going into the DLP incident manager, selecting incident task. And when you go into the incident task, you're gonna have a purge incidents. In the purge incident, you're going to choose actions, new rule, and we're gonna say data in motion, part A. And I'll show you where this is going to come up when we actually run the task, the server task, you'll see where part A is gonna show up and you'll know where we created that from. Choose next. Now I'm gonna go after the endpoint time and anything that is earlier than today's date Today is the 11th, but I don't want to get locked in with just today's date. So I'm going to make it the 31st of August. And anything prior to 1 a.m. on the August 31st is going to get purged. Now, you could very well, and what I would suggest that you do is think about what you want to purge. You don't want to purge everything like I'm doing, or maybe you do, and that's a decision that you will make. Or you're going to choose particular incident IDs. Here's the incident ID. You could say I want incident IDs that are greater than or less than and you can use the boolean here to suit you. Okay, but this is what we're going to do for the purposes of our lab. Don't do this in production unless you know what you're doing or at least have thought this through pretty well. Now we're going to click save. That's it. That's all we do for that. But we're going to actually take some KB articles we got from Trellix and we're gonna do this in a very comprehensive way. It's not just data in use in motion, but we also have to do data in use in motion for the history. Again, choose purge incidents, new rule. We'll say data in motion history. And we're gonna put here part B. Click next. Same thing that we did earlier. It's gonna be later than today's date. It's gonna be August 31st just like we did in the other one. So now we have part B, data motion part A for purge incidents. 
All right. And then what we're going to do, we schedule this task, or in our case, in the lab, we're going to do this all before you. Go to server tasks, and we're going to make this easy. Just type in DLP here in the quick find, and we'll get a smaller subset of that master menu. And you're going to locate purge history. What I could do here is enter the word purge, and you'll get the two DLP purge tasks that we want to use here in the server task area. And what we're going to do here is I'm going to click run, but what I'm going to do is minimize this so you can see what's going on in the background. What's going to happen here, and this is going to happen real time, when I click on DLP purge history of operational events and incidents, I'm actually going to select run. And when I select run, a new folder is going to be created in this evidence folder. And you will see these items, and I'm going to just bring this down so you at least can see a couple of them disappear. And I'll show you where they go in a second. All right, are you ready? Let's go. All right. I'm going to minimize and you'll see that all of the evidence in the folder has actually disappeared. These are literally empty folders. There's no more information in them and they've gone to this pending delete folder. And in the pending delete folder, you'll see that we have all of our evidence has been collected. We just basically did a move and they left the folders behind to be cleaned up later on. Now what we want to do is we want to get rid of the evidence itself. I'm going to close these up because we don't need them anymore. Now that we finished that, we're going to look at the server task log. In the server task log, we're going to go over and look at the DLP purge history of operational events and history. And here's where you see the data in motion history part B. You know where that came from. You have the DLP ops history that came in here. And now you have a really good idea of what's being used. Okay, let's talk about the evidence of what we're going to do. Here's what they officially say in the Trellix material. By default, and we're going to show you this folder again, this pending delete folder. By default, the file folder in pending delete will be retained for 60 calendar days. Now, we're going to refer you over to KB article 93441. The KB walks you through all of the items that I have done already, but at the very bottom, this PDF is important for you to keep in mind because in all the lab testing and all of the different articles that have been put out by Trellix and also in the community. You'll notice that when you go to run the purge evidence, it doesn't go away. And the reason it doesn't go away is because it's going to hang around for 60 days. But what makes this article that's been attached to the official KB is this right here. If you're sure that the evidence files in the pending delete folder are not going to be required any further and they're not being used by any other incidents, you can actually delete them manually. Let's run back here to EPO and show you that in the incident manager, there's nothing here. We cleared out all the incidents in the incident history. There's nothing here. You'll also notice that when we go up to the DLP operations, we have event list. There's nothing here. The event tasks, of course, this is where we put the, the purge. There's no operational event history. Everything is blank. Or if you deleted by incident or evidence ID, you're looking for those specific items to not have any ties to the evidence folder. So now what you can do is you can come over here to the folder that's in the pending delete folder and you can very simply delete it. All of the items that are associated are gone. You'll notice in the DLP resources and evidence, you have miscellaneous folders that are there. 
There's nothing referencing them. These will get cleaned up. There's literally nothing in them. They all got cut evidence put into this pending delete. And that's how you can get rid of it. Otherwise, you'll have to wait 60 days for the automatic housekeeping to catch up and take care of all this information. But for a, a lot of you, you, you're in here now wanting to clean everything up and get all of this folder and the contents cleaned up because you might be out of disk space. There you go. Now you know how to clear the incidents and clear the evidence. I'm Jay in the lab. Until next time, take care of yourself.